you, you say that uh, that archaeology is not always the best at seeing the trees, but it's very good at seeing the forest. What, what do you mean by that? Well, what, what, what I mean by that is um, it's, it's actually very difficult for archaeology to give us an, an almost ethnographic snapshot of what the past was like. Mm -hmm. So, and, and many archeologists have a, a, approached the excavation and the reporting and the interpretation of an archeological site so that you, the reader, would have an almost ethnographic-like sense of being there mm -hmm. in, the, in the past. So that they can give you an image of what you would have seen if you had walked into this camp 10,000 years ago, yeah. here's you would have seen four houses, and you would have seen someone sitting over here flint napping a, a spear point, and someone over here would be tanning a, a hide, mm -hmm. and someone over here is going to be cooking around the fire, and there were X number of people here, and, and um, they're sharing meat between these this house and this house, but not between this house and so that this house. So this is the personal and kind of humanistic it, it's side. A, it's very personal. It's very hum, humanistic. Yeah. The, the ultimate example of it, because archaeology occasionally can, can do this. Are you going to say Pompeii? No, not Pompeii, but uh, um, uh, Otzi. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, you know, Utsi was somebody who died about, a man who died about 5,000 years ago, very high in the Alps, uh, in the Italian Alps. He was, he was murdered. Mm -hmm. Someone shot him with an arrow in the back. Um, and and he, he was, his body was preserved because he was frozen up high. So it's, it's over 10,000 feet in the Alps. And he just, it just so happens that after he died, his body gets covered in snow and, and by ice, and he's kept in a deep freeze for the next 5,000 years. He eventually melts out. He's found in the early 90s by some hikers who thought yeah. it was somebody who had died the year before. I mean, it was so well preserved. That's kind of crazy. It, I, I, I've been to the museum um, in, um, in Italy, Bolzano, uh, Italy, where they, they built this little museum just for Utsi. Yeah. And what we know about this person is unbelievable. We can reconstruct his last 24 hours um, in amazing detail. So much detail that if we could get in a time machine and go back, I'm certain that we could convict his killer. We, we could figure out who, who killed him. Yeah. We know what his last meal was. Yeah. We know where he, he grew up. Um, we know where he spent his the last 10 years of his life. It was not where he was born and raised. Um, we know what path he took in order to get to where he was, he was killed. We knew that he had been in a fight recently. Uh, and as I said, we knew that we know that he was murdered. Yeah. We, we, we know he had been ill several times in the, in recent, recent months. Um, we can tell all kinds of things about him genetically, right? Yeah. Certain th we can reconstruct his appearance, and in fact, at the museum, they did exactly that. Um, you can stand next to him and have your picture taken. <laughs> uh, it's it's a, it was it's this um, remarkable detail we can get out of this one person, and this really the last twenty four hours of their of their life we know in amazing detail. That's extraordinarily rare. We can't. We can rarely do that kind of detailed reconstruction. The, the, the public, of course, is very excited about this because mm -hmm. it gives you this very intense connection yeah. to this one person. It's, it's a very humanistic mm -hmm. connection. And it, it's, it's wonderful. It's great to do. But, but that's most, not all archaeology. That's, that's, it's in not fact, most archaeology. It's not most archaeology. I mean, that's like... A tiny fraction of one percent. Yeah, yeah. Of archaeology, most of the time, we're lucky if we can date something to within about a hundred year span. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you this: this site dates to this maybe hundred year span, and usually it's longer. 
yeah. than that. And the farther you go back in time, the the less precise we we become. Right, and the wider the windows for, chronologically speaking, for how artifacts are actually related to one another. So, like, if you have the footprint of a house, you're not dealing always with a Pompeii where uh, it, it represents a fairly short window of human life, but that it 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 could potentially have represent a hundred years of, of people living there, or or or, or, or more. more, yeah, or or more. It's a it's a palimpsest is the word we yeah. often use. Um, which was uh, the kind of sheepskins that were used for writing in like Rome and uh, Greece. Yeah. And um, you would write something on it, and then because those, those that, that kind of vellum paper was yeah. hard to get, someone would come along and kind of erase. Scrape it clean. Scrape it clean and yeah. then write over it. Yeah. And you always, you'd leave a little bit of the ink behind. Yeah. You do this four or five times, and you've got this writing on top of writing on top of writing. Yeah. That's what our most archaeological sites are like. That there, yeah. We can't date things very, very um, precisely. Not with the kind of precision um, that much of the public, I'm sure, would like to be able to see. He- heck, that many archaeologists would like I mean, to. Yeah, be that'd able be great. Why not? But yes. <laughs> and so, so and, and you so, end up in a situation where, where in many cases, you're not going to be able to see the exception. You're just going to see the rule. You see general patterns. Yeah, is is what you can see. So, you can see the forest, but not every individual tree. Yeah, uh, that's quite frustrating to many to many people. But um, some years ago, I figured this this is the strength of archaeology. If we can we can ask it to try and always give us utzi, always give us very very fine grain images of what the past was like. We will be our our actual data record would be extremely limited. Yeah. It would be so limited that you really couldn't say anything. Yeah. So Utsi gives us this this very, very fine grained image of life five thousand years ago. But um, the rest of the Neo Neolithic is is left in this kind of I kind of think of it as a photo where Utsi is in in clear focus. But the rest of the photo is kind of pixelated. Yeah. But it's sort of like impressionist painting. If you step back far enough from it, yeah, the image that's a appears. great analogy. The image appears. I love that. Um, so uh, that's that's what we can do with archaeology virtually everywhere in the world. So that's its strength. That's what it brings to the table mm-hmm. is its ability yeah. to look at broad patterns in space and time.